If you've had thyroid eye disease for years and you go through artificial tears in the blink of an eye, it's not too late for another treatment option. To learn more, visit treated.com. That's treat, T-E-D.com. Want luxury hair repair that doesn't cost $50? Pantene's Pro Vitamin Formula repairs hair as well as the leading luxury bonding treatment for softness and resilience without the price tag. If you know, you know it's Pantene. Tomorrow on ET, I got all the goodies. <laughs> NCISLA cast confessions before this weekend's finale. Happening now. I spoke to her <laughs> to keep her breathing. Emotional testimony from the first officers on a horrific scene where two young daughters were allegedly stabbed by their own father. We were the only cameras in the courtroom for the bond hearing of Stephen Clare. Another quiet day today. A cold front arrives tomorrow night. I'll be back to talk about what that means for storm chances and even weekend temperatures in just a bit. The personal estate of Larry McMurtry will go up for auction. So if you're a fan of the Texas iconic author, you could own one of his manual typewriters or check this out, his Steinway piano. The news at five starts right now. I applied pressure to help her and I spoke to her to keep her breathing, just to let her know that she's not alone. A crime scene that was gut-wrenching for emergency crews described in court today in the murder case of Stephen Clare. He's the Alamo Heights nurse practitioner accused of shooting his ex-wife and stabbing their two young daughters at their home near Alamo Heights. The 11-month-old girl died from her wounds, and today Clare was in court. Our camera was the only one rolling. Our Erica Hernandez has more on the painful testimony that was shared today in court. Today's hearing a very difficult one for those testifying today. We are hearing for the first time details from the first responding officers to what they say was a horrific scene. I do want to warn you that some of the details in this case are graphic. I, I really thought she was going to die in my arms. SAPD officer Veronica Butler, the first one to arrive on the scene in the 500 block of Robin Hood Place on April 10th. On the ground outside of the home, Mariah Claire laid in a pool of blood. I applied pressure to help her and I spoke to her to keep her breathing, just to let her know that she's not alone. As other officers arrived, Officer Butler directed them to go inside the home to check on the kids. One of those officers, Brandon Lyles, was the first one to walk into the home. And then as I turned around, I saw two juveniles laying in a hallway off of the living room. They're both covered in blood. The two girls had severe injuries to their abdomens, and while two-year-old Rosalie survived, 11-month-old Willow didn't. Throughout all testimony from almost a dozen witnesses, no emotion was shown by Stephen Clare. Now it's up for 437 District Court Judge Joel Perez to decide and rule on the motions. He is not ruling today. He will rule on a later date to go over evidence that was omitted. In the meantime, Claire will remain behind bars with bonds totaling up to $3.5 million. At the Covina Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, Case at 12 News. Also first at five, a jury believes a murder trial defendant who said he didn't do it. A jury handing down a not guilty decision this afternoon in the murder trial of Bobby Solis. Jurors had deliberated for about two hours of the case. Solis had been charged with shooting and killing John Eric Garcia back in 2020 at a West Side apartment complex on Callahan Road. Witnesses told police they saw the victim going out to meet Solis just moments before they heard the gunshots. But Solis denied killing Garcia, saying the telling the court that someone else pulled the trigger and the jury did not convict him. Now, San Antonio police say that a mother and father are facing charges as their two month old baby is being treated in an intensive care unit. Officers say the child is suffering from bruises, skull fractures, also brain bleed. Police arrested 34 year old Diana Ramon and 27 year old Orlando Cruz after Ramon called 911 this weekend. The baby was lethargic, unconscious, and according to the arrest affidavit, Ramon told officers that when she came home on Friday, she found Cruz pressing a baby wipe into the baby's hand and that the wipe was full of blood. Now, investigators say Ramon also told them that she found a cut on the baby's foot. 
According to the affidavit, later that evening, Ramon said that she's noticed bruises on the newborn's shoulders and abdomen. Now, police say the child didn't receive medical attention until the next day when he lost consciousness, and that's when Ramon called 911. Now, Cruz allegedly admitted that the baby fell out of his hands and then hit his head on the bassinet. Now, Cruz is charged with child injury. His bond is set at 15000 and Ramon is charged with serious bodily injury to a child by omission, and her bond is set at $75,000. A fatal crash caught on Transguide cameras early this morning. Take a look. This is I-35 near Loop 410 at around 2.30 in the morning. You can see a driver was traveling southbound when the vehicle slammed into a collapsible barrier. They say the driver was not moving and pronounced dead at the scene. No other vehicles were involved. The identity of that driver has not been released. Now across America, a grand jury has indicted the suspect in the deadly stabbing of four University of Idaho students. Brian Koberger is charged with four counts of murder and one count of burglary. Last November, the bodies of the four college students were found at their home. A preliminary hearing that was set for next month to present evidence has been canceled. The victims that were set to graduate this month have been honored posthumously, and Koberger could face the death penalty if he's convicted. Intense, massive flames causing this building to partially collapse this morning. This fire at an apartment building in North Carolina. It was under construction. A crane operator got stuck inside. They had to be rescued. At one point, part of the building collapsed. One person taken to a hospital with life-threatening injuries. But we do not have any word on what caused this fire. Prosecutors say the Air National Guardsmen accused of leaking classified documents on social media had been warned multiple times to stop mishandling classified information. They say that 21-year-old Jack Texera had been warned on at least two occasions. In September, prosecutors told the judge that Texera was told to stop taking notes on classified intelligence. Then in October, officials told him to stop asking specific questions about information that he got. A third incident report says that a superior had observed him looking at intelligence not related to his primary duty, but he wasn't reprimanded at that time. Memos detailing the incidents came to light just days before a Massachusetts jury or judge, excuse me, decides if Texera is going to stay in jail while he awaits trial. Abortion laws that severely limit the procedure when it is legal are spreading across the country. Several more states now trying to ban access to abortion after a certain number of weeks. But as ABC's Rena Roy reports, a district court in Montana is blocking the state's new abortion ban that was just signed into law on Tuesday. Abortion rights continue to be front and center in courthouses and legislatures across America. In Montana, a district court judge siding with a lawsuit brought by Planned Parenthood temporarily blocking a law signed by Governor Greg Gianforte Tuesday, which banned the abortion method most commonly used in the state after 15 weeks of pregnancy. The judge finding the new law caused immediate and irreparable harm. Meanwhile, in Nebraska, the legislature successfully combined a 12-week abortion bill with another bill banning gender-affirming care for minors, which is expected to have a final vote today. The debate getting heated. We owe it to kids to let them grow up so they can make these decisions as adults. If you vote for this, you will have buckets and buckets of blood on your hands. Earlier this week, Republicans in North Carolina's legislature overrode a veto by the governor, pushing through a bill to ban most abortions at 12 weeks. It balances protecting the life of the unborn child. It balances that with a woman's need for life-saving care. Women did not ask for your oversight. We didn't ask for your supervision. And in South Carolina, most Republicans trying to push through a bill to ban abortion at six weeks. The bill now heads to the state Senate for their consideration. And if it passes, the governor is expected to sign it into law. Since Roe v. Wade was overturned nearly a year ago, at least 15 states have stopped nearly all abortion services. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Now making world headlines, officials in northern Italy say at least nine people are dead after severe rains caused heavy flooding in the Emilia-Romagna region. Now, according to a local CNN affiliate, crews are still looking for other people. The region was in the midst of long drought when it got six months of rain in only 36 hours.
The country's main utility provider says that 27,000 people are without power, but as many as 20,000 people could be out of their homes. President Biden in Japan on the eve of the G7 summit in Hiroshima. One of his goals, to strengthen ties with his allies. This amid China's growing military and economic ambitions. Biden meeting with the Japanese prime minister, emphasizing the close relations between the U.S. and Japan. Bottom line, Mr. Prime Minister, is that uh, when our countries stand together, we stand stronger. And I believe the whole world is safer when we do. Biden also pointing to the deepening cooperation between the two countries and emerging technologies, including some new partnerships with quantum computing and semiconductors. There are more signs that people aren't as interested in buying homes. That's because home sales dropped for a second month in April. The National Association of Realtors says that existing home sales dropped 3.4 percent from March, but it's an even bigger drop when you compare it to last year. Actually, the loss is at 23 percent when you compare it to 2022. Now, one reason could be mortgage rates. They're up. You all know this. They were near 7 percent when many of the homes sold last month went under contract. Going to look outside with your traffic authority cameras and we've got traffic moving just fine into the city, moving out of the city. Not quite so good. This is 410. At Fredericksburg, you can see those westbound lanes stacking up a little bit, moving a lot slower. Decent amount of sunshine, but the high clouds are starting to stream in, and that's actually blow off cloud cover from these storms that are just across the border here. West of Del Rio, you see the thunderstorm. It's falling apart, even though a few lightning strikes are jumping out away from that storm, actually into parts of southeastern Valverde County and western Kinney County. And then you get closer to Eagle Pass, and it wouldn't surprise me, came out to Eagle Pass, if you get a quick splash of rain from this, but this thunderstorm activity is having a hard time really sustaining itself as it moves eastward. So a quick shower possible through 7 p.m. right along the border and that's it. But you look at the cloud cover and the blow off clouds up aloft. They're getting thrown our way and you'll notice those this evening making for a nice sunset. 93 in Del Rio, 90 Eagle Pass. We're 89 in Floresville. Temperatures for the most part right around that 90 degree mark. 91 in Mico and Windcrest now at 89. Through this evening, those high thin clouds increasing. 78 degrees at 10 o'clock and by midnight we're at 73. A lot to talk about coming up in a few minutes. A cool front that's going to affect our storm chances along with our weekend temperatures and the newest drought monitor is in a comparison Ooh, coming right. right up. It's Therm Thurs. You got have it that all. drought monitor, baby. <laughs> all right, cool. I like it. Now coming up, the chance for you to own a piece of literary history is right here in Texas. We're going to show you some of the items that are on the auction block that belong to a Texas icon who left a big impression on readers. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom with a look at what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. The Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission now looking into a shooting that happened outside of a Northwest Side nightclub. Several people injured, one person killed. Those details today at 6. A mail carrier under arrest on a charge of credit card abuse against the elderly. How police accuse her of abusing her position and what we found about her criminal history. Plus. And while this may sound dramatic, kids will die. A bill passed by the Texas legislature banning gender affirming care now on its way to the governor's desk. One woman we talked to firmly believes it will trigger even more suicides among trans youth. Her story is today at six. We'll see you then in less than an hour. Thank you so much, Myra. Lonesome Dove, Brokeback Mountain, The Last Picture Show, all classics, many of them shot in Texas, all of them were the work of author Larry McMurtry. He died two years ago, and now part of his estate is going to be auctioned off. Our Marilyn Moritz has a glimpse into the life of a Texas icon who loved books and also Dr. Pepper. Oh, the stories these books could tell. Lonesome Dove, this is actually signed by our, our local hero, Tommy Lee Jones. Lonesome Dove is the most celebrated work of Larry McMurtry, a prolific writer and Texas treasure. And what's cool about this is these are his personal copies of his works and his famous things. So we're talking about 
the, the terms of endearment that's off of his shelf in his master bedroom. Rob Vogt showed us the 312 pieces from McMurtry's estate that will be sold to the highest bidder. Among them, several Hermes 3000 typewriters. It's all manual. Oh yeah, he uh, he would have, have nothing else. McMurtry was known to bang out five double-spaced pages a day, every day. Fiction about cowboys, real and raw. Works that won a Pulitzer, Emmys, and critical acclaim. This is the desk, the partner's desk, that he and Diana Osana actually wrote the screenplay to Brokeback Mountain on, which ultimately won an Academy Award. These are pieces of McMurtry's life. Hollywood mementos, an old pinball machine, even a Steinway. McMurtry was obviously a man of eclectic, if not discriminating taste, among his prized possessions, this Italian opera and this Dr. Pepper lunchbox. He loved his Dr. Pepper. He also very interestingly liked bones. He loved skulls and he had a huge collection of skulls, almost as if out of a museum in his home there in Archer City. The rhinoceros skull for one. These are his uh, shotguns and handguns. Vote estimates this old Colt 45 will fetch a few thousand dollars. But this is one of those interesting sales where it's a, it's a wild card. McMurtry's estate is getting the most interest Vote has ever seen. A testament to a man who knew how to tell a story. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. So the live auction is Memorial Day, but the bidding has already started online on VoteAuction.com. He's got some pretty weird bone uh, furniture, by the way. Oh, there's, so there's more of that. There's, cool. I, I, she didn't show it all, but it's it, it, so cool. A little gruesome. All right. Uh, this is pretty. This is not gruesome at all. Well, so we're looking off to the west, and those clouds are thickening, and they're just high clouds that, yes, are typically thin, but they happen to layer up way above us. That's the blow off cloud cover from the thunderstorms that we have in Mexico. Now the way aloft, we're talking 30 to 40,000 feet high, sometimes higher. Those clouds get thrown our way and then they obscure our sunset and we're seeing that. Let's take a look at our storm chances around here. 0% tomorrow. Friday's just fine. Friday afternoon, just fine. Friday evening, nothing to worry about. It's Friday night. After sunset, we need to keep an extra eye and ear to the sky. And then even into Saturday, an isolated shower or storm possible. Notice only 30% Friday night, 30% Saturday, and then down to 20% as we get on into Sunday. Okay, we'll get to our future cast in the pattern in just a bit. Let's start with some good news. Now, this is the drought monitor from six weeks ago. All right, I'm going to give you the full view here. Step out of the way and get ready for it. Three, two, one. This is the current drought monitor updated today. You know, just for fun, let's do that again. Six weeks ago, today, wiped away the drought east of I-35, just completely got rid of it, put a nice uh, dent in the drought here and lowered the category a bit, even for Bear County. This is some good news. I really love to see this. And coming up at six o'clock, we're gonna get into how much rain has fallen all across our area, actual measured rain from rain gauges uh, since April 1st, when we really started to see the rainy pattern and soon. Now, obviously, we still have some work to do. We've got to make up some ground in parts of the hill country, but we're on the right track. And again, Friday night, we could see some action and I think even higher odds up in the hill country. Look at the state east of I-35. We're fine. You go west and that's and even north. That's where we get into the drought. OK, let's talk about our pattern. We talked about those storms in Mexico having a hard time making it to the Rio Grande. Maybe a quick shower south of Del Rio, K Mato down toward Eagle Pass as well. That's through 7 p.m. Otherwise, it's generally quiet. Just some West Texas showers popping up. This upper level disturbance swirling above us over well, actually above the Baja Peninsula. That's thrown some energy our way and will continue to do so over the next couple of days. That's one reason why we have those isolated storm chances. But another reason is this cool front that's going to be dropping in tomorrow night. As I said before, tomorrow afternoon, just fine. Outdoor activities, no reason to cancel, no reason to even be concerned. It's after dark tomorrow that cold front moves into the hill country and storms will be popping up somewhere along the cold front. Just because the future cast is saying Fredericksburg at 10 o'clock, doesn't guarantee it. It could really be anywhere along that cold front, but starting in the hill country, then gradually moving southward. If San Antonio happens to get in on any of the showers and storms tomorrow night, it would be late. I mean, we're talking after dinner time and 
it would probably be a pretty quick hit, but there is the chance of some strong to severe storms. So on a scale of one to five, five being the worst, highest chance, be a two, a two out of five throughout the hill country and even into San Antonio with straight line winds and large hail pos posing the primary risks of that potential severe weather. 68 in the morning tomorrow, some low clouds early, then a sunny day, 91 the high temperature, humid southeast wind at 5 to 15. Catula 96, Uvalde 93 tomorrow, Canyon Lake at 91, Helotus 88, Seguin right at 90 degrees. This weekend a little bit cooler behind that front, 82 on Saturday. By Sunday we're at 80 degrees with those isolated showers and storm chances periodically throughout the weekend. And then Tuesday an isolated chance, otherwise looking fairly dry next week in the mid 80s. Really quickly, check this out. In Beautiful. shirts, had the honor of hosting a California pipe vine swallow tail in her pollinator garden. Really cool, just came out of his cocoon today. Beautiful color, thank you Adam. Larry, I'm so glad that you're here because you. for the past few days we've been talking about the Spurs and how they reacted when they found out that they had won the number one pick. And now we know. Yeah, now we're going to go inside the yes. lottery room where Spurs general manager Brian Wright had to wait for about an hour before he can come out and tell his people the good news. Plus, how a coin flip cost the Rockets the possibility of drafting Wimby. Coming up. Three. San Antonio again. <laughs> San Antonio again. We will go through this once more. A Spurs lottery combo has drawn a total of three times, twice at number four, forcing redraw since they had already won the number one pick in big board sports. Before TV coverage of the 2023 NBA Draft Lottery, the winner was already determined an hour before, which of course was the San Antonio Spurs. Members of the 14 teams in the lottery were holed up in a room without any electronics while officials took care of the lottery. 14 ping pong balls, numbered 1 through 14, were mixed up in a machine, and then a ball is drawn until a four ball combo is complete. There are 1,001 possible combinations. San Antonio, Houston, and Detroit were assigned the most combinations of 140 each, giving them a 14 percent chance of winning the top pick. Here's the moment those inside that drawing room found out the Spurs won. And two. San Antonio. Congratulations to the San Antonio Spurs for winning the first pick in the 2023 NBA draft. Talk about awesome and agonizing at the same time. Spurs general manager Brian Wright had to sit inside that room until the ESPN broadcast was over with trying to be respectful of all the other teams inside, all the while wanting to celebrate and tell the rest of the organization the great news. Shed a little light as to how calm or not calm today was for you as you waited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, it's uh, you ever you seen the duck swim where your feet? You know, you can't, it was it was a lot like that for most of the night. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you control what you can control. You try to put yourself in a good position, and, and fortunately tonight we we got a little lucky. Yeah, luck was on the Spurs' side. So a few weeks ago, the Rockets beat the Spurs in a coin flip to determine the odds of the 28th and 29th place teams. Had the Rockets lost that flip, they would have been aside the Spurs winning combo numbers of 14, 8, 5, and 2. Instead, Houston got 14, 8, 5, and 1, and they missed out on Wimby. Go Spurs, go. We'll be right back after the break.